is another episode of the Bobcat Club podcast. I'm your host, Carl Schoening. Today, we're joined by the head coach of the Texas State football team, Jake Spavital. Coach Spav, thanks for joining the show. What's going on, Carl? How you been, man? Uh, it's been okay. You, you, all things considered, uh, it could be worse. So uh, I'm just uh, happy to get these podcasts rolling and uh, be able to do some stuff for the fans. All right. I see you breaking down some basketball tape over there for Danny Casper in their team meeting room. Yeah, yeah. He he occasionally listens to me on some interesting things that I might know about basketball. Uh, but football's your realm, and uh, what's going on in your realm these days? Uh, we we record this the day before what would have been the spring game. So just uh, how, how have you been? Yeah, it's uh, it, it's been interesting times for everybody. And I, I think the main focus right now that, that really the only focus is, is making sure that uh, everybody is safe and that they're healthy. Um, so that's kind of been the emphasis that we've had. Um, you know, as a football coach, it, it's all about being able to adapt on the run uh, to handle adverse times. And, and these are times of adversity, not just for a football program or the university, but the entire world. So uh, the main thing is to make sure that we're staying healthy and, and staying safe. And, and in the meantime, we're taking it a day at a time. We're, we're working through this. Uh, we're trying to make sure that we are in constant communication with our players and our staff and making sure that they're in a, a good spot and they have the means necessary to make sure that we can uh, continue to move forward with the momentum that we had uh, at the beginning of this spring. But, uh, you know, I, I, these are difficult times and unprecedented times, but it, it's an opportunity for, for us to, to kind of find a different routine and maybe we can polish up some things that uh, need to be uh, having more focus on. So uh, it, it's been, uh, you know, I always love the challenge. I, I, it's always been an interesting time to just wake up every day and, and figure out that the rules could change that we thought were in place yesterday. So uh, again, communication is the key. And so we're doing a lot of uh, Zoom meetings, a lot of dialogue with everybody that touches our program and uh, just making sure that we're all in a good spot and, and we have the means necessary to keep uh, building off the momentum that we currently had. You guys did have quite a bit of momentum, a really good uh, national signing day. Thank goodness that all of this happened before or all of this happened after that went down. But uh, what has maybe the transition been like for especially some of those new people that have come in on campus uh, that were expecting to come in on campus and just all of your student athletes now you're you were going to be working with them for spring football and they're on their own now yeah it was uh, again we had 22 seniors last year so we felt the immediate need to get some mid-year transfers and we had 13 new guys on campus so uh, they were becoming very acclimated to uh, to Texas State and I was I was very pleased with the progress that we were making and and uh I, I like the attitude that they have right now. They've got a lot of optimism about it. And, and there's a lot of good discussions within the program and, and, and the players making sure that we're all on the same page. And uh, uh, it's, it's been fun to at least uh, get on these Zoom conference calls with these guys and, and hear them crack jokes on each other. And we're all literally across the entire state of Texas and some across the entire country. Uh, but, you know, uh, fortunately for them, that they got to be a part of this and they understand, uh, you know, the ins and outs of what we're trying to accomplish for next year. Uh, you look at the newcomers that aren't here on campus yet. That's that's going to be kind of a bummer for them because everything's going to be remote until uh, this gets cleared and goes away. So uh, we're uh, we're sitting going through NCAA on on their ruling on when we can start meeting with these kids and, and make sure that we can develop them and get them caught up as as fast as possible. So when this thing does die down. Uh, we can hit it full speed and we can get everybody here on campus. Fortunately, there are still some things you can do recruiting wise. And here at the Bobcat Club, we raise money for scholarships and a scholarship seems to be most popular in pop culture with football recruiting. So how does that tie in and uh, what, what do you think we can still expect for recruiting and scholarship fundraising? Yeah, it's like I said earlier, this gives us a time to actually polish up um, you know, our, our recruiting and, and fundraising as much as possible. You know, it's uh, that those are things that we can put an emphasis on right now. So we meet as a staff through Zoom calls and, and we've uh, 
uh, we delegate a lot of responsibility and making sure that we're communicating with all of our recruits. So I, I think these recruits um, that we're evaluating and we're getting in contact with is, is all very uh, beneficial for us. You know, there's a lot of great dialogue that, that happens. Um, and a lot of offers. If you look at Twitter, I think we're just spamming Twitter feeds with, you know, blessed to receive an offer from Texas State University. I think the staff is doing an unbelievable job of making sure that we're getting these these offers out and uh, we're having discussions and making sure that we're all on the same page with it. And then we're all delegating time where everybody on our staff actually communicates with these recruits. And and uh, it, it's been good. I just got a list of 19 kids that I just got handed about 30 minutes before hopping on this with you on, uh, I got to get on the phone with 19 kids by Monday. So that's going to be my weekend plans is, is recruiting as much as you can. And, and in the meantime, I've been, I've been reaching out to as many people, uh, from the Texas state family to uh, just see how they're doing. I know these are, uh, you know, tough times for a lot of our donors and, and, uh, uh, and it's been, it's been good to just reach out with them and, tell them that I'm thinking about them and, and making sure that we're all in this together and eventually this thing's all going to die down and we're all going to come out stronger from this. What are some of the positives that come out of this situation? Can you find some silver linings that have resonated with you on how you're making adjustments just like everybody else in your daily life? Yeah. Um, you know, I'm a, I'm a very optimistic person. You know, like I, I believe that you have to be have a, have a lot of optimism in your life to be successful. But I, I look at this time, you know, for anybody to just kind of personally look at themselves and, and see what they need to improve on and how they can gain more knowledge and something or just uh, really sharpen their tools, uh, you know, and just uh, I think it's an opportunity for everybody to, to help others and make sure that we're, we're making sure we're safe and healthy and, and we're, uh, growing every single day and not just being lazy and just finding positives out of everything that we're doing uh, because eventually this thing's going to die down and we're going to have to hit this thing full steam ahead and uh, hopefully this uh, gives not just myself but a lot of other people an opportunity to to focus on some things that may have been uh, neglected and you know maybe it's a, it's a good time to, to maybe call some other people that you haven't uh, been in contact in a while and just make sure that you're you're checking in on people and trying to make this world a better place. Before we let you go, we, we mentioned it earlier, spring football unfortunately canceled, but uh, while fans can't get a chance to see some of these new guys with your their own eyes, who maybe stood out in the very limited time you had a chance to see them in spring practice? Yeah, it. Uh, I think we had 13 guys, like I said, that were here and – I think a lot of these guys stood out. Like I was very pleased with the direction of these newcomers because uh, when you lose 22 seniors, you need some guys to come in and fill the voids immediately. And I think we've done that. I think they're uh, some of the more competitive practices I've been a part of, more physical practices I've been a part of. You, you look at Russell Baker and Silas Robinson that we brought into the offensive line, uh, already making an immediate impact. They got size and speed and, and a nastiness to them that we need. Uh, so pleased with the whole line. Uh, you look at receivers, we had Marcel Barbie and Drew Jackson and Kevin Howard uh, adding depth, adding size, big catch radius guys. Uh, they're very competitive too. They talk a lot of trash in practice. Uh, they're, fun to, they're fun to watch. So uh, pleased with the direction of where Coach Peeler's got those guys going and, and making sure that uh, uh, we're adding a healthy competition to that room. Uh, running backs, you have Brock Sturgis and Jamil Jeter. Those two guys coming in have uh, added a lot of depth and a great competition in that room. And I, I'm very impressed. That's probably the most impressed, impressive group that I've seen so far is that running back group because uh, they're, they're electric and, and, and they're fun to watch. Um, defensively, you have Maurice Wren, who is uh, going to be a very solid player, a big body, a, a pass rush guy from the boundary that's going to go try to sack the quarterback that's got elite size and length, but he can also drop out in coverage and cover flats and because he can move and he's a great athlete. So he's he's definitely going to – it's a great addition. Uh, you look in the defensive backfield, you got Grid Isidore and Tory Spears, two transfers that uh, – they're athletic. They're fun to watch. They're uh, you know besides like them and the running backs are the two groups I love watching because they're all over the place. Uh, you know they're they're aggressive. They've got a 
uh, a good demeanor and presence about themselves. And uh, they're definitely going to add to the depth that is, is missing there in the, in the back end. And uh, linebacker, you have Isaiah Kareem, who's uh, definitely going to be a guy that's going to be a force to be reckoned with. Uh, a very hard headed guy that he's going to, he's going to stick his face in there and he's going to get, he's going to get tough and, and uh, he's, he's not going to shy down from contact. So uh, those are the guys right there that, a kind of a brief summary of what we've got that what Bobcats can look forward to in the future, but uh, very pleased with where they're at. I'm, I'm extremely pleased with uh, the coaching staff on how we recruited and how we got these guys here because these guys are going to end up helping us a lot whenever we decide to play football. Final question, but it's really uh, just the stage is yours. What would you like to say to Bobcat Nation right now, uh, everybody watching in? Yeah, just to, to keep your head up, you know. Um, I know these are unprecedented times, and and this is an opportunity for us to to possibly get ahead. Just find the try to find the the positives in everything that you do, and and understand that eventually that uh, we're all going to get through this, and we're going to overcome this, and we're going to come out stronger than we were before. And uh, just make sure that you guys are are practicing all the guidelines and listening to the experts because those are the ones that we have to lean on because they've got the direction right now. I know everybody's got an opinion, but those are the ones that are are putting these rules in place, and uh, we need to abide by them because that's going to be the best for us. And eventually, uh, we're gonna we're gonna flatten this curve, and we're gonna uh, you know get back to doing what we love. So just keep following the social distancing guidelines and, and listen to the experts. And eventually this is going to pass and we're going to come out stronger than before. Thank you so much for your time, Coach Spavadol. We have a little bit of time between now and projected week one. So hopefully we get to see you on the sidelines and everything's back to normal so we can enjoy some football. Exactly. I can't wait. Looking forward to it.